for their future. We educate, engage, and inspire. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into the St. Luke Sports and Event Center for tonight's matchup, the home opener for the Proctor Rails. That is going to feature the matchup of the Wadena Deer Creek Wolverines. Ted, keep it along with the, our student workers. We got Devin Stafford and we got Caleb Dobozinski uh, here for us tonight. Uh, unfortunately for all you fans out there, my voice is the only voice you're going to get to hear tonight as we do not have a second person for here so uh, we will do our part to uh, make sure that uh, you enjoy this game we did get for those of you that watched the mirage game uh, last week uh, we did get our score widget fixed so you'll be able to see the score and the clock time uh, and so good things happening here at rails tv uh, our next broadcast live will be also on monday right here at the st luke sports and event center when the rails will take on the toppers from duluth marshall uh, and that game will be a 7.05 start. So, again, we'll be right here on Rails TV. Uh, with us that night will be the guys from the Northland Sports Bridge, Brian Prudholm and Dave Cook. They'll be here doing simulcast. The radio broadcast will be coming right into our video. Uh, so that'll be a very cool thing. We've done that the last couple of years, uh, whether it be here or at football, where they've come in and they've done the announcing. Uh, let our students uh, be able to do the work and actually put the broadcast together. But you'll be able to hear that. But right now, what we want to do is uh, we had a moment to be able to sit down with coach, head coach Jeff Lasby before the game started. We want to share that uh, interview with you here and now. So we'll be back right after that interview. Three. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Audiology Concepts Coaches Show. With me today is Coach Jeff Lasby, head coach of the Proctor Rails hockey team. Coach, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, Ted? You know, I'm great. Uh, another hockey season. Ready for it? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. We've been ready for a couple of weeks. We want to get on the ice and play somebody here, so we're pretty pumped up. Absolutely. So take us a little bit through the first year as a bench boss for the Rails. We know that you were on the bench with the Mirage, but that's got to be pretty different going into actually being the boss and calling the shots. Yeah, it's quite different. Just all the, all the off-ice stuff you got to do with media and uh, high school league stuff and uh, working with the coaches, making sure everything's set for the season when it comes to uh, apparel and ordering everything. So it was a little different view after having Coach Gilderman doing that for so many years with the Mirage and me and uh, Jeff Gunderson got to kind of just worry about the on-ice stuff while Glenn did all that. So now I kind of see what it's like on the other side. But you had a great mentor in Glenn Gilderman. Yes, uh, Glenn was great. Um, taught me a lot about different ways of, of reaching the kids. Uh, expanded the way I coach and coach kids for sure. Um, just kind of building the relationships a little bit more instead of always focusing on the game of hockey and more of, of the person you're actually coaching and learning more about them. Absolutely. Now, you lost 12 seniors last year, uh, first year seniors for you coming yeah. to the program. How did you replace that leadership with the younger kids coming up? And I mean, 12 seniors, that's a lot of, a lot of people to lose for a team. Yeah. Um, no, last year's group, it's always tough coming in as a first-year coach when you have a big group of seniors like that that have been under leadership from someone else. But uh, they did a good job adjusting throughout the season, and I feel like about halfway through the season, they started kind of picking up what, how we wanted them to play and you know, a little bit different style, but it's always tough to replace, especially 12 players when you obviously don't have that many coming up every year. That's a huge group of kids to try to replace. Now, kind of piggybacking on that question uh, is, you know, we talked a little bit before this, you know, that you have a lot of young kids coming up. You know, what are you going to expect from them? And then, you know, what are some names that, you know, the fans watching at home here on Rails TV uh, should be listening for, even this early in the season, you know, home opener here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center? Um, well, we got a good group of sophomores and uh, actually one junior that are moving up from our a good Bantam team from last year. Uh, it's, it's a little easier to get them in fresh, and they kind of have the expectations from day one that we want. They don't have stuff kind of burned into their brain. But they also, 
learned from uh, Coach Halpa a lot last year in the Bantam program, and me and him kind of had the same vision. So he's kind of running a lot, a lot of things the same way that we want to run them up here. So that was actually great that they had a year under him, and now he's actually at Duluth East, which was a huge loss for us. But uh, we're, we're proud of the work he did with those boys. But they they learned a lot last year, and the expectations now for us coming in as sophomores. Um, they know exactly what to expect. So you talk about last season. Yep. Last season was tough, shortened schedule, can't play anybody outside of, I, well, I think hour, it was like six half. miles away or something yeah. like that, uh, hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Now you got a big expanded schedule. I know that you, for sure you have one big road trip on the schedule. Um, why is this schedule this year going to be so much different and why is it important for to be able to get more than an hour and a half away from here? Uh, well. Everything we kind of planned for last year kind of got thrown thrown out the door once we did the shortened season and went to 17 games. We had two schedules set. We had to throw those out. That ended up being a 17-game season. Um, when we looked at it, we dropped a few teams we normally would have played and didn't really have much of a break when it came to the quality of teams we played last year. And I kind of did that on purpose. I wanted pretty much as good a competition as we could get in that shortened season for the playoffs. And we got beat up a, a few games and the boys are a little tired, and, but they, they realized at the end of the year, playing that steady, good competition throughout the year got us ready for playoffs. And I know we, we didn't play very good against North Shore during the regular season and should have had at least one of those games and kind of gave one away, but we went up there in the playoffs and, and took it to them and then played Hermantown Probably about as tough as anyone around here played them all seasons. Two nothing in the middle of the second. Uh, Sammy Johnson played a great game. Uh, boys kept it together. I think it ended up five nothing at the end of it. But that was one of their closest games for the whole year. And the boys told them, "Hey, keep your head high because that's what we wanted to do. We wanted that competition. So we knew we were going to have to play Hermantown or or Denfeld in the playoffs eventually. So." That's, that's kind of the mindset we had. Now this year, we have a more balanced schedule. Uh, still got some very good teams on the schedule with Grand Rapids, Hermantown. Uh, Rock Ridge being combined, Eveleth and Virginia is gonna be a very good So back here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center, it looks like we're gonna get started a little bit early. So we'll get back to that interview uh, in between the first and second period and first intermission. And right now we're gonna turn it over to the voice of the rails, Mark Fleischman, down in the press or down in the scores table. Hockey fans, welcome to the St. Luke's event and tonight for tonight's game with the Wolverines from Wadena Deer Creek and your Proctor Rails. Let's start off by meeting the starters for Wadena Deer Creek. Starting in goal, wearing number 27, Gunnar Olsen. At defense, wearing number four, Aiden Sutherland. Also on defense, number five, Dalton Moyer. At a wing, number nine, MJ Lundy. Also at a wing, number 11, Aiden Allred. Starting at center, number 12, Cole Berglund. Wadena Deer Creek is coached by Scott Woods. Great moments are born from great opportunity. And that's what you have here tonight, boys. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. 
And now let's meet the starting lineup for your Proctor Rails. Starting in goal tonight, he's a senior wearing number one, Sam Johnson. On defense, he's a senior wearing number 11, Austin Moores. Also on defense, he's a sophomore wearing number 27, Carson Pavlovich. One of your wings tonight wears number 22, he's a junior, Frank Amendola. Your other wing is a senior that wears number 24, Kenan Riles. And your starting center is a senior wearing number nine, Dylan Halla. Your assistant coaches are Corey Ward and Kevin Danielson. Your Rails head coach is Jeff Lasby. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to honor America and as a show of respect to the men and women who have given their lives in preserving freedom in this country and throughout the world, we ask that you now rise if you are able and remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. So back here at the St. Luke Sports and Events Center, again, Ted Kieford on the call for tonight's matchup featuring the Wolverines from Wadena Deer Creek and our very own Proctor Rails. Uh, welcome into our Proctor faithful and welcome into the Wadena Deer, Deer Creek uh, followers. Thanks for being here. Glad we could bring this medium to you again. We will get back to our interview with head coach of the Rails, uh, Jeff Lasby, in first intermission between first and second period. But right now, we're going to get ready to go get underway with some Rails hockey again. The starting lineups for tonight at center, Dylan Holla for the Rails. At the wings, you're going to have Frank Amendola and Kenan Riles. At the defense, uh, Carson Pavlovich. And on the other side, Austin Moores. And in the net, the man who likes to stand on his head, Sam Johnson. He's a senior. Uh, and uh, boy, let me tell you, if you look at last year, uh, some of the big games, uh, the 5 nothing. Uh, uh, even the 5 nothing loss to the Hawks that the, the Rails had last year. Uh, the reason it was only 5 nothing and not greater in that score category was because of the goalie, uh, Sam Johnson. So uh, tonight should be a good uh, contest here. Um, on the defensive side for the Wolverines, Moyer and, and Davis at the wings, Lund Bur and uh, Allred at center, Cole Berglund, and their goalie is Gunnar Johnson. There we go, got our score widget working and we are underway. And here, a big shot on goal by Amendola, but a big save by Olsen there to get us started with the Rails getting a shot on the board. I have a face off to Olsen's right. Again, want to thank our students. There you go. 
You're going to hear me talking to our students uh, on and off here today because uh, we have uh, two students that have never worked a broadcast for hockey. And here come the Wolverines. That's Davis. Davis tries to dump it deep but can't get it to go. And now be out of the zone. It'll be an offsides. And now they will tag up and head back into the offensive zone. That's going to be pushed into the corner. That was Morris that tries to push it out and out of the zone again. And on it was Solom. Colin Solom trying to get a body check there, not able to. And a puck deep behind Johnson. Morris did not see it, but now here comes out of the zone. Here comes Solon, right side. Tries to play it off the boards, but does not make the zone. And now going to have to get back out to reset. Solon can't hang on to the puck, and now into the zone is Woods. Cole Woods, one of the senior captains for the Wolverines. Sutherland putting the pressure on onto the rails defensively in the offensive zone. Peterson trying to push it back in for the, and nothing going to happen there. No ice going to be called. And we have a stick laying in the middle of the ice, and here come the Wolverines again. Being rubbed off the puck is Lund. And the Rails will try to push it back the other way. Lund got in the way and not able to possess. So a lot of play in the neutral zone here for both these teams as they try to feel each other out. That's out of the zone. And left right at the red line. That's Lund trying to push it back in, but a host of jerseys there to stop it. But staying with it are the Wolverines. Now getting it deep is Lauderville, and that's going to be coming back out, and it's going to get dumped deep for the Wolverine over by the for the Wolverines by Othol. And here comes Riles. Riles gets it deep after he gets hit right into the boards and back up on his feet. That was Berglund, the captain for the Wolverines. And Puck pushed back down into the rails end. Morris will go to get it and try to clear it out, but able to hold it in the line is Lunt. Lunt now shooting up left of there, the circle. And here comes Riles. Riles plays it off the board, tries to push it up top for Hala, but couldn't get there as it got stuck on the boards, but being held in by Amendola. Now deep into the corner. Riles tries to hold it in. Amendola tries to come right side and going to stop it and freeze it right there with no whistle still moving. Oh, right in front. Amendola had an opportunity for it, but the just did not have a stick on the ice, so nothing doing. Riles will now carry it into the offensive zone. Tries to bounce it off the board, unable to play it. Goes and gets it, now pushes it back to the boards. And there to try to get it is Oakstead. Cooper Johnson now trying to clear it out, but left right there for number 24, Cole Woods. Shot blocked. And now the Rails will try to push back the other way, but able to hold the line is Parrott. Pardon me, that's Pettit. So Pettit now holding the line there for the Wolverines. And digging it out. Shot on goal and goes in. So let's take a look at that goal there. So we're going to take, oh, wait, we got to get that up where we want it to be instead of uh, <laughs> the pregame stuff that we were doing. So let's just go back for now. Again, working with students who have never done this for us before. So we'll try to get that uh, taken care of. Uh, and uh, make sure that we uh, get that. Davis from Pettit, that even strength goal coming at 352 of period one. So Davis from Pettit. At 351 of the first. Folks, we're going to let you watch this for a minute while we try to fix our uh, instant replay. Give us a moment. We'll be right back with you. So we got our problem fixed. Big shot there taken from the line. That was number five, Moyer, senior cap or junior captain. And big stop there by Johnson. With me now. 
So one nothing here. Uh, 12 13 left first period as you can see with that score widget and uh, goal there was from David uh, was uh, Davis from Pettit at 351 of the first. Now the official doesn't like the uh, wings pushing up shot from the point goes wide by Domer and the Wolverines able to hold the line. So Johnson will step out to go play it. And Oakstead tries to clear it out of the defensive or out of the uh, defensive zone. Unable now. This is Lauderville. Lauderville put, tries to make a move, play it off the boards, but the Wolverines right there able to keep it in the zone. That's Othout. Othout now back out in front. Luckily he had nobody there because we had an open on the back side. And now the Rails will push it back down, and that'll be a shot on goal for Moores. And we'll freeze the puck up. I'm sorry, that was not a sh Morris. That was Oakstead. And we'll get a face off in the offensive zone for the Rails. Take a minute to thank our sponsors. The Tamarack Building Supply is on Highway 53 in Hermantown, Heritage Window and Door, Superior, Wisconsin. The Reed Foundation, the Rails Endowment for Academic Art and Athletic Development. Irving Community Club Polling for Kids. Great Lake Office Solutions. Wittis Trailer Sales, ESCO. Lent Smart Mortgage in Hermantown, the Rob and Barb Shaler Charitable Foundation, Stream Dudes for all your streaming needs, StreamDudes.com. Troy Service Center, Main Street Proctor, and our game sponsor, Audiology Concepts, with five locations, Superior, Duluth, Grand Rapids, Edina, and Burnsville. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to our students, because without them, we can't bring you this broadcast. That comes through the slot. No one there to get it. And now the Wolverines will start to push it back up into the offensive zone. This is all red. All red battling the, with the puck in the corner. Now pushes it to the far right side. Going to get it is Amendola. Amendola gets it out of the zone, but going for it was Riles, but he got tangled up with two yellow jerseys and unable to corral it. Now McLeod tries to push it back, and he does. And Cooper Johnson tried to clear the zone, but just not enough angle off the board. It stayed there. Now here come the rails. This is McLeod. McLeod gets it deep into the corner, tries to push it back up. Nobody there, but then gets some help from Bartlett. Bartlett pushes it far side. On the puck is Allred. Shot right on goal. That was Oakstead, Nolan Oakstead, sophomore defenseman. Uh, seeing some uh, a lot of time so far here in the first period. Some of you might remember his brother, Wyatt Oakstead, senior who graduated last year. Also played hockey for these rounds. Oakstead pushes it up. Can't get it. Now going to have to hustle back again on D. And here comes a 3-2 for the Wolverines. Treating to leave it in the zone. Picking it up was Oakstead. McLeod trying to help. And Johnson will freeze it as it's laying out in front of him with two jer yellow jerseys. And we'll get a face off in the defensive zone. Again, thank you to Caleb Dobosinski and Devin Stafford for being here, our camera, uh, our cameraman and our uh, producer director. And here's the, well, Dina won the face off, hard shot up and over the net, now keep it in, and that goes in. And that's gonna be scored by Connor Davis. Davis is gonna have his second of the night, right in the slot, picking up the trash, and he puts it in. Let's take a look at that goal. So I'll show you how to do that. Go to your cameras. Yep. And then uh, click on this one. Um, hmm, why is that not showing? That's right. We'll get it here in a minute. But we're going to turn it over to the uh, in-house PA Scoring who's going to let us know. Wadena Deer Creek, his second goal of the hockey game at number six, Connor Davis. He got an assist on the goal from number 26, Aaron Sutherland, and number 16, Jaeger Pettit. That's Davis from Sutherland and Pettit. That even strength goal coming at 552 of period one. So Davis and Pettit both with two points on the board already tonight. And Deer Creek looking to get back into the offensive zone and pushing it in is Pettit. Jaeger Pettit, a great first name there for a hockey player. All of the hockey fans will remember uh, Yammer Jagger. And uh, so great name when I saw that roster. Trying to battle the puck. Uh, was Holla. Holla can't get it to go. Now going to slide down into the slot in the offensive side of the zone. And here come the Wolverines. 
Picking up the puck was Moores, and he gets it deep, and the rails are going to reset. Down in the corner, Lanthier tried to put it in the slot right there, and it is pickpocketed, and now being pickpocketed is also Sutherland. And the rails will dump it back in. Losing an edge is Davis. And going back to get the puck, Holla Holla now pushes it forward. This is Bartlett. Bartlett skates in. No help goes right wide side, but just a little high off the corner. And no goal. And they're going to say off sides. So they got a clear. And here come the Wolverines. Granda pushes it in for the Wolverines. Trying to look around the monitor here. McLeod now going to try to move it up. Goes off the skate of a Wolverine and now out of the zone. And that's now going to be dumped into the bench. Going to be dumped into the bench. And we'll have a faceoff outside the zone. So the Rails win the faceoff now, dump it into the neutral zone. Trying to get it was Morse. Morse couldn't hang on to it, so now come back the other way is Deer Creek. Pavlovich now pushes it wide side to the shitting. That's going to be a shot right on Olsen, but right in his chest, and we'll get a faceoff there in the offensive zone for the Rails. Again, uh, first intermission, we'll uh, replay the coaches uh, show, the Ideology Concepts coaches show with uh, head coach Jeff Lasby for about uh, tonight's home opener and you know just a little recap of uh, you know first year as the bench boss for the Rails uh, and uh, just kind of what those differences are from you know that uh, kind of shrunken down season last year because of COVID and then where we are with a brand new uh, wide open season. Big save there by Johnson. Kick save to the right side and that's going to get out of get out of the zone and trying to go get it is going to be Bartlett. Bartlett now pushes it far deep. Dylan Davidson playing the, trying to play the puck, got body down there, and now the Wolverines will clear it. This is Lund. Lund goes far right side, dumps it deep. Johnson back to play it. Now pushing it to the top side and holding it in for the Wolverines is Moyer. Next kick sign to the left side of Johnson and going to get it again as a host of rails trying to clear the zone. Bartlam there to try to throw it to the far side, but nobody there to play the wall. Leaving it there was Woods, and that's going to be an icing. So if you're just joining us, 2-0 uh, for the Wadena Deer Creek Wolverines. Both goals coming from Connor Davis, the defenseman for the uh, Wolverines. Uh, Pettit get an assist from Pettit on the first one, assist from Sutherland and Pettit on the second. And that's going to get out of the zone. Here come the rails. Amendola with the puck. He's got help. He's got Riles wide side. Riles with the backhand. And there's a big goal. Now we're going to see if we can try to get this power play uh, or get this uh, to work here because that would be really cool. So we'll see if we can get this to work. I don't know why that's. <laughs> Where's Tim Roweeder when I need him? He was here. Well, I don't know why that's not showing anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the fans watch some hockey. I'm going to turn my voice. I'm going to turn the voice Scoring of. Scoring for your rails, his first goal of the season, number 24, Kenan Riles. He got an assist on the goal for number 22, Frank Amendola. That's Riles from Amendola. That even strength goal coming at 9.32 of period number one. So Am Riles from Amendola is your first goal, and the rails are on the board, 2-1 with 6.50 left here in the first period.
All right, I think we're uh, good to go on our instant replay. We'll find out on our next one that uh, is of any uh, shot or consequence here. Uh, but uh, that uh, Riles from Amendola, 9.32 in the first period. And again, the Rails cut that lead 2-1 and are looking at a defensive face-off in the defensive zone. Bartlam to take the draw. That is the line with McLeod and Solem. That's the second line for the Rails. That goes uh, in there, and Johnson gets a blocker on it, pushes it wide right side. Now back up to the point, can't hang it in, is Pettit. Pettit lets it go out of the zone, and now they're going to have to reset. Rails are now on their skates. Looks like they picked it up a notch after putting that goal in. Buck gonna go out into the bench and we're gonna get a face off in the neutral zone. So the rails win the face off and on it is Oakstead. Oakstead sends it deep for the rails and going to get it is gonna be Solom. Oakta tries to push it in there, can't get it go, and it goes. Not sure who scored that. Let's go back and let's take a look at that. So if you click on, click on that, and then swap it into the other side quickly. There you go. And we're just going to back that up just a hair so we can actually see that. So puck comes around the corner there, comes top side. Uh, Oakstead there puts it in or puts it down in the dome. Doesn't get in, but someone on the far on the right side got the tip. And we're gonna hear from the in-house PA, Mark Fleischman. Oh, another one that was on the back. Can't can't get it going. It's there. So the rails picking it up, getting ready to go. And saying, hey, we're going to get into this and we're going to try to make something happen. Now take the lead. 3-2. So that's going to be one of the young bucks that got that goal because that's good, that puck's being retrieved by the official. That's his first varsity puck. And that's going to be put out. And now they are going to put that. Uh, on the bench. So Holla takes the drive. Now here comes Riles. Riles push right side. Now going to try to see if he can make something happen, get it up in the slot, but being off, rubbed off. One, Brett Bartlum. Bartlum. He got an assist on the goal for number eight, Cullen Solom, and number 12, Nolan Oxted. That's Bartlam from Solomon Oxted. That goal coming at 12-18. And scoring the third goal for your Proctor Rails, his first goal of the season, number 22, Frank Amendola. He got an assist on the goal for number 24, Keenan Riles. That's yeah. Amendola from Riles. That goal scored 10 seconds later at 12-28. So 12-18, 12, 12, 12-28, that's Bartlam from Solom and Oakstead, and they won at 12-28, Amendola from Riles. Uh, Riles and o Amendola both now, like Davis and Pettit, both have two points on the early night here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center. Let's go back and let's take a look at that uh, goal. You're going to have to click on it first so it knows that you want it, and then go ahead and play it. Let's see what it looks like during this button. So puck gets dropped into the zone, can't get it roll, can't get it to roll, and there it is. As you can see in that back left-hand corner, waiting for it was Amendola with Riles right there giving off the lift, and that, that takes a 3-2 lead. Now for the rails out in front. Great job. Caleb, great job. You're on this, man. Now we got it fixed. We're not going to roll it. Now moving the puck around, that's uh, number 22. That was Kador, can't get it to go. And now the Rails will just clear it out and trying to get a piece. Wyatt. Minahein, that penalty was for roughing. Minahein roughing, uh, that penalty coming at 13-26. So Minahein in the box, the Rails shy, a player now. 
I did not see that go on, and that's going to be a icing call on the Wolverines, and that's going to go all the way down to the other end. And the uh, the uh, rails on the penalty kill will get an offensive faceoff in the offensive zone. Something's going on here. Not sure exactly what it is. Uh, looks like they're going to come out to center ice uh, for the faceoff. You're going to have Solom and McLeod, uh, Moores, and Pavlovich for the penalty kill out here for the rails. Got Lund. All red and Kadora out for the Wolverines. Now knocked off the puck. Was Lundy that was out in front. Johnson able to get a little piece of it, push it out, and blocker right side. Not there, not there. And that's going to be cleared, and the Rails will get a change. Riles, Halla, and Cooper Johnson on the ice now for the Rails. And trying to keep it in and not able to. Bring it into the zone is Sutherland. Sutherland goes down right corner, leaves it for Woods. Now going to clear it again is the Rams. They send it all the way down with 41 seconds left on the power play. Woods takes it. Now going to move it up for the Wolverines. Pushes it, but intercepted it by Holla. Holla now kicks it deep again from the red line to continue to kill the power play that the Wolverines are on. Puck drop deep. Go back to get it to Sutherland. Sutherland brings it back around. Olsen now resets with 14 ticks left in the power play. That's going to be left as it bounces over the stick of Woods and the uh, penalty kill here. Rails did a great job there on that penalty kill, continuing to play uh, the uh, neutral zone ice and keeping it deep and actually having a couple of shots at, on the penalty kill to, to get a shorty. Now, here come the rails again. Almost hauled on. This is Halla. Halla's looking for some help now, dumps it deep as, they were on a, as the rails were on a change. Olsen going to be stopped the shot there. That was Bartlam that came through, got a piece of that. But Olsen right there stops it, and we'll get an offensive faceoff here in the uh, Deer Creek zone. Again, want to thank all the rail faithful that are joining us. Also, thank you to uh, all the Wadena Deer Creek fans that have joined us that couldn't travel here tonight. Glad you could make it. Rails win the faceoff, but can't hang on to it as Moores just couldn't hold it, hold it out the line. Deer Creek going to try to make something happen. This is Lump bringing it in the zone, takes a shot, able to stop it as Johnson as a kick save, pushes it left side. Now that got uh, deflected as it went through the slot and trying to kick it out is McLeod. McLeod can't get it to clear the zone, leaves it. And a wide angle shot that's going to be picked up. And that's going to be icing on the rails. Not sure why uh, McLeod didn't touch that and try to skate with it. Uh, but uh, icing it is, and that's where we're at. Again, during intermission, we're going to bring you the uh, uh, coaches show from the, ideo the Ideology Concepts Coaches Show with Jeff Lasby. Um, also, we just want you to know that uh, during that time, uh, we won't be playing any sound or anything except for Coach Shore when we come back to talk about uh, the first period uh, as uh, we need to make sure we watch out for our copyright infringement. Big shot by Halla. Halla can't get it to fall. Now it goes back and gets it again, fighting with it. Big shot back on it, tipped. That was Oakstead that tried to get it through, but unable to. He was tipped down and left. Now Oakstead steps up with a big hip 
and not allowing Kador to get there and make sure that he can try to make something happen as the clock was ticking. Goaltender Gunnar Olsen, 10. For Proctor goaltender Sam Johnson, 10. So saves all knotted up at 10 apiece for uh, both teams. And, uh, and the score here, 3-2 at the St. Luke's Sports and Events Center. We're going to take a break. We're going to bring you back to that uh, coaches show uh, with Coach Jeff Laspie, and we'll be back after that for a second period action. Three. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Audiology Concepts Coaches Show. With me today is Coach Jeff Lasby, head coach of the Proctor Rails hockey team. Coach, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Ted? You know, I'm great. Uh, another hockey season. Ready for it? Yeah. yeah, I'm ready. We've been ready for a couple of weeks. We want to get on the ice and play somebody here, so we're pretty pumped up. Absolutely. So take us a little bit through the first year as a bench boss for the Rails. We know that you were on the bench with the Mirage, but that's got to be pretty different going into actually being the boss and calling the shots. Yeah, it's quite different. Just all the, all the off ice stuff you got to do with media and uh, high school league stuff, and uh, working with the coaches, making sure everything's set for the season when it comes to uh, apparel and ordering everything. So it was a little different view after having Coach Gilderman doing that for so many years with the Mirage, and me and uh, Jeff Gunderson got to kind of just worry about the on ice stuff while Glenn did all that. So now I kind of see what it's like on the other side. But well, you had a great mentor in Glenn Gilderman. Yes, uh, Glenn was great. Um, taught me a lot about different ways of, of reaching the kids. Uh, expanded the way I coach and coach kids for sure. Um, just kind of building the relationships a little bit more instead of always focusing on the game of hockey and more of, of the person you're actually coaching and learning more about them. Absolutely. Now, you lost 12 seniors last year, yes. uh, first-year seniors for you coming yeah. to the program. How did you replace that leadership with the younger kids coming up? And I mean, 12 seniors, that's a lot of a lot of people to lose for a team. Yeah. Um, no, last year's group, it's always tough coming in as a first-year coach when you have a big group of seniors like that that have been under leadership from someone else. But uh, they did a good job adjusting throughout the season, and I feel like... About halfway through the season, they started kind of picking up what, how we wanted them to play and you know, a little bit different style, but it's always tough to replace, especially 12 players when you obviously don't have that many coming up every year. That's a huge group of kids to try to replace. Now, kind of piggybacking on that question uh, is, you know, we talked a little bit before this, you know, that you have a lot of young kids coming up, you know, what are you going to expect from them? And then, you know, what are some names that, you know, the fans watching at home here on Rails TV uh, should be listening for even this early in the season, you know, home opener here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center? Um, well, we got a good group of sophomores and uh, actually one junior that are moving up from our a good Bantam team from last year. Uh, it's, it's a little easier to get them in fresh. And they kind of have the expectations from day one that we want. They don't have stuff kind of burned into their brain. But they also learned from uh, Coach Holopa a lot last year in the Bantam program and me and him kind of had the same vision so he's kind of running a lot a lot of things the same way that we want to run them up here so that was actually great that they had a year under him and now he's actually had Duluth East which was a huge loss for us but uh, we're, we're proud of the work he did with those boys but they, they learned a lot last year and the expectations now for us coming in as sophomores um, they, they know exactly what to expect. So you talk about last season. Yep. Last season was tough, shortened schedule, can't play anybody outside of, I, well, I think hour, it was like six half. miles away or something uh, like that, uh, hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Now you got a big expanded schedule. I know that you, for sure you have one big road trip on the schedule. Um, why is this schedule this year going to be so much different and why is it important for to be able to get more than an hour and a half away from here? Uh, well, Everything we kind of planned for last year kind of got thrown thrown out the door once we did the shortened season and went to 17 games. We had two schedules set. We had to throw those out. That ended up being a 17-game season. Um, when we looked at it, we dropped a few teams we normally would have played and didn't really have much of a break when it came to 
the quality of teams we played last year, and I kind of did that on purpose. I wanted pretty much as good a competition as we could get in that shortened season for the playoffs. And we got beat up a, a few games, and the boys were a little tired, and, but they, they realized at the end of the year, playing that steady, good competition throughout the year got us ready for playoffs. And I know we, we didn't play very good against North Shore during the regular season and should have had at least one of those games and kind of gave one away, but we went up there in the playoffs and, and took it to them and then played Hermantown, probably about as tough as anyone around here played them all seasons, 2 nothing in the middle of the second. Uh, Sammy Johnson played a great game. Uh, boys kept it together. I think it ended up 5 nothing at the end of it, but that was one of their closest games for the whole year. And the boys told them, hey, keep your head high because that's what we wanted to do. We wanted that competition, so we knew we were going to have to play Hermantown or, or Denfeld in the playoffs eventually, so that's, that's kind of the mindset we had. Now this year, we have a more balanced schedule. Uh, still got some very good teams on the schedule of Grand Rapids, Hermantown. Uh, Rock Ridge being combined, Eveleth and Virginia is going to be a very good team. Um, we're going to do a, a city swing with Red Wing and Rochester Mayo, and that's actually a thing we didn't get to do last year. We get to do a road trip and do some team bonding, so kind of got a lot of stuff planned this year, and hopefully we can do it, but the schedule the schedule is going to be solid for this year. I think it'll get us ready for the playoffs again. Very cool, and last but not least, home game, home opener here at the St. Luke Sports and Events Center. Fans in the building, yeah. um, you know, what do you expect uh, out of your team, but more importantly, what do you expect out of this Rodina Deer Creek, you know, and what does tonight's matchup look like? Well, we've been kind of preaching to the boys. We, we want to play fast. We want to, we want to be a faster transition team this year, get the puck going the other way, um, put pressure on teams more than we did last year. Last year, we, we kind of stayed on our heels a little bit instead of pushing the puck up. And we got a big group of uh, young defensemen that have to play for us just because we're so thin on the blue line this year. So they're going to learn on the fly, but they've done a great job the first couple of weeks of practice, and I think they're ready for that, that type of challenge. Uh, Wadena Deer Creek, don't know a ton about them just because we had them on the schedule last year, end up not playing them because of the distance thing and COVID. Um, but they usually have a few guys on their team that, that can really play. And they're, they're a lot like us at, at this time. They struggle to get big numbers. So they, they're usually mid-20s for numbers. And I know they couldn't field the JV team this year. And um, that's, you know, we're close to that. If we have any, any more injuries or anything else go on, we might be in that same boat. But um, they'll, they'll give us a good game tonight. We just want to come out fast out of the gate and get on the right side of the scoreboard and just kind of let everything kind of snowball in our favor for once this year. Absolutely. Any uh, last bit of advice to the fans watching? Anything you want to say to the fans in regards to the 2021-2022 hockey season for the Rails program? Yeah, come out to the rink and, and watch us. I, I think we'll play a fairly exciting brand of hockey. The boys are, are pumped up and they're, they're always going to come out here and work hard and that's been their kind of motto from day one. So you want to come out and watch some good hockey. We got some good teams coming in this year and they'll feed off the crowd. The, we should have some more fans here this year and that's going to be great for our kids. Absolutely. Well, coach, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Yep, thank you, Ted. And that was Coach Jeff Lasby, the boys hockey coach here at Proctor High School. Thank you to Audiology Concepts for the Audiology Concepts Coaches Show. We'll be back right after this.
Back here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center, Ted Keep It Along with Cableb. Hello, Cableb. I just called you Cableb because I can't talk apparently. With Caleb Dobozinski and Devin Stafford, want to thank them again for being here. A uh, little back, little uh, stats for the first half or first period. Uh, the uh, first on the board were the uh, Wolverines, 351, uh, Davis from Pettit. And then at three, 552, Davis from Sutherland and Pettit. Then the Rails got busy, got one on the board from Riles, uh, from Amendola at 932 of the first. And then the, it was all Rails from there. Bartlam from Solom and Oakstead at 1218. And just 10 seconds later, Amendola from Riles at 1228. And that's where we are right now, 3-2 with your rails leading the Wadena Deer Creek Wolverines. Right now, we're going to take a quick break and hear from one of our sponsors. We'll be back here just momentarily. Hi, I'm Dr. J with Audiology Concepts at the Grand Rapids, Minnesota location. I have so many patients who tell me, I wish I would have come in sooner because I thought it was just a simple miscommunication here or there, or that the TV just needed to get turned up. Most people with hearing loss in the United States don't have a really severe hearing loss. It's more of a mild to moderate hearing loss, and it happens so gradually over time, you might not even notice it happening. So when you come in, not only have a really great opportunity to give you an update on the status of your hearing, but also to have a conversation about how to protect your hearing. Back here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center, 3-2 your score. The Rails lead the Wolverines from Deer Creek. Uh, we knew this would be a good game coming into tonight uh, as uh, both these teams face real stiff competition. Uh, last year, even though uh, we could only uh, play against teams that were uh, within an hour and a half or so of our their prospective schools, they still, as Coach Lasby talked about, played you know a strong schedule and going to keep this year again. Uh, make sure that uh, they keep the Hermantowns and the Grand Rapids and those schools on our roster uh, are on our schedule, as you know it's only going to allow these these kids to get better. Uh, when you play that better competition, it is going to raise you to a level uh, that is going to continue to then glow in your uh, program. You look at the Hermantown Hawks. Uh, you know, even before uh, they started going to state championships, they were playing the big schools. They were playing those uh, schools that had uh, deep lines. I know that uh, next week they start on the, uh, I believe they're at are on the road Friday at home on Saturday, uh, but they start out with Benilde St. Margaret uh, on the road, and then I believe, I want to say it's Edina uh, at home on Saturday. So, uh, you know, just like uh, the Mirage coming out and playing a big school and us coming out and playing big schools, uh, you know, we got to get uh, that uh, that experience underneath us uh, and get ready to go so that when we uh, are able to make a playoff run and do things, as the coach last week said, we'll be able to uh, get deep into those playoffs. And the second period is now underway. The Rails won it, but dumped it deep on the chase is Allred. Allred gets to the puck and able to keep, try to hold the zone. Taking a shot from the point was Moyer. That now dump back deep. We're working on getting our camera there for you folks. There we have it. And helping hold the zone is, and again, already able to, or Sutherland able to hold the zone. Now that comes out on a lazy puck. Now pushes it far right side. Moyer pushes it in. And fighting on the other side is going to be Bartlam. Bartlam now tries to wrap, or tries to get there defensively, but trying to get there and wrap it around was Berglund, but able to stop it is Johnson. That puck's going to come all the way around, come to the top side, but trying to gonna push it out is going to be Solom. Solom gets it out, going to go all the way down to the other end for an icing, and we'll have a face-off in the defensive zone. Again, our next live broadcast is going to be next week on Monday when the Hilltoppers from Duluth Marshall come a call in here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center. On the face-off is Woods. Woods draws it back to his... And not able to get it through was 16, Pettit. And going to be an offsides call as Hallows came through the lane but hung up inside the zone was Amendola. So faceoff comes outside of the offensive zone. Hallow takes it, now tries to push it right. Riles can't control it. Now gets it back in, dumps it deep. Olsen back to control it for the Wolverines. And putting pressure 
as the rails come up and around. Amendola trying to get it now. Knocked off his skates was Halla. Now right on front, Amendola shoots, scores! Amendola right there picked up the loose trash from Halla. And on the board, quick here in the second are the rails. So Amendola should be the one on that goal for the rails. And the Wolverines win the faceoff, but right there is Amendola trying to play it again. Cooper Johnson tried to step up. Big shot going and trying to get it is Johnson, but it goes up and over the right side of the cage. And now the rails will knock it out of the zone. Dump back deep by Sutherland. Johnson comes out to play, swinging around over to get it is Oakstead. Scoring for your Proctor Rails, his second goal of the hockey game, number 22, Frank Amendola. He got an assist on the goal for number 24, Kenan Riles. That's Amendola from Riles, that even strength goal coming at 124 of period number two. So Amendola one shy of a hat trick in both him and Riles with three points apiece here in the early goings. It's probably a, a duo with that first line that you're gonna hear a lot of between Riles, Amendola, and Hella, uh, that top number one line for the Rails this year. Uh, Rails win the faceoff, can't control it. And now pushes it back. Here's from the top side, big block save. There was Moyer for the attempt. Now it goes all the way around and out of the zone. It will not be an ice as it was Moyer who shot it and unable to get to it was Sutherland. Moyer pushes it back into the corner, picking it up is Kern. Kern can't control it. And there to get it is Barlam. Barlam trying to help hold it. Shot from the point was Pavlovich. And there was a lot of traffic and couldn't get it to go anywhere but wide. Now back down deep as the rails will go in and try to get it again. Shot on goal, can't get it to fall. Solom pushes it to the point. That was more as it shot it deep, nowhere going as it just goes down and around and keeping it in is going to be the rails number 21, Brett Bartlam. And the rails will get a change. And now here it comes. It's going to be an ice, and it's going to come all the way back down. So that, that change is going to work well for the rails as they'll have fresh legs in the offensive zone here in the early goings of period number two. If you weren't with us earlier uh, at the beginning, uh, the uh, Proctor cheer squad, they, our cheerleaders were out there actually on the ice and back on skates uh, like we used to do. So uh, great job to those young ladies and uh, the coaches for uh, bringing something back to the hockey games that uh, I believe was sorely missed. Now puck dropped deep down to the offensive zone. Now pushed back to the point. This is Oakstead. Oakstead fires, kick saved by Olson. Puts it in the right-hand corner there to try to dig it out as Carter. That's Ethan Carter. Now it's going to come the other way. And here comes Lundy. Lundy can't hang on to it. Now it gets tipped off his stick. And coming in for the hit. He's trying to see who that was. And uh, I'm going to butcher that. So it's Manny, I believe. And not thought he had it frozen was Olsen, but it was out and free. And going to get his oath out. Now he'll clear the zone and sending it back deep is Cooper Johnson for the rails. Wolverines will try to reset, and the Rails are putting on some great pressure as they are here. Number one line back out for the Rails. And Pavlovich will hang on to it and try to knock it back in the zone, but can't hang on, can't control it, control it as Kondora now will take the shot, goes right side, and tips off the toe of Johnson. And here it is. Amendola right into the chest of Olsen. Olsen now hangs on to it, and will have a face-off in the offensive zone. So the rails on the uh, on their edges and getting where they need to be have picked up the tempo. And Amendola trying try to fight through the body of Moyer. And here come the Wolverines. That's Woods trying to push it up. Not able to get anything done. Pavlovich will now help turn it, but he lost it off his stick. Now try to get it there. 
and turning her back around. That could have been trouble. Now go back in. It's going to be trouble. Woods. Now oh, big save and now went from Woods with the miss to Sutherland back to Woods on the rebound and re he puts that one in and as one to the board for the Wolverines. Let's take a look at that one one more time. So you can see that it was kind of knocked around at the uh, blue line now coming in. Uh, that's Woods. Woods can't get it to go left side to Sutherland back to Woods and it goes in. So captain to captain to captain and they are on the board 4-3 and let's hear what our in-house has to say. Scoring the goal for Wadena Deer Creek was number 24 Cole Woods. He got an assist on the goal for number 26 Aaron Sutherland. That's Woods from Sutherland. That even string goal coming at 4.52 of period two. So Woods from Sutherland, just as we called it, because of the amazing uh, kids we have here running this program, that will not be an icing as getting a stick on it was Domer, but unable to corral it. Now he's all the way back behind the goal line. Down in the corner. Allen was trying to put some, or pardon me, Solom was trying to put some pressure on and digging it out is going to be Pettit. Pettit now go, tries to push it all the way around. Picked up by Lundy. Now pushed back down below the goal line. Ethan Carter right there. That puck holds the zone. Oh, now they're going to say it's offsides. Now the rail's reset, and here come the Wolverines. Pushing it deep was Allred. And they got an advantage on the change if they do something with it, but nothing happening. And Lundy now picks it up. Man, here come the rails. Going to call it off sides. And we'll get a face off in the neutral zone. Again, want to thank Caleb Dobozinski and Devin Stafford for being here, our cameraman and our producer director. We appreciate them. That's put into the zone on the Deer Creek win at that face off. Pavlich going to try to push it out and up. He gives it off to Morris. Morris can't clear in a host of yellow jerseys right there. Now trying to clear it out and not being able to keep his feet. I want to say that was white. But on the run, that was Lauderville that got to that puck before the icing could happen. And Pavlovich now will try to turn it back in in the neutral zone. Pavlovich, Moore sends it back. Pavlovich now has to go get it, try to clear the zone, and does. And here comes Riles. Riles trying to put some pressure on Sutherland, but no doing. Riles has gained a step from last year. You can just tell that he's put some, uh, uh, some uh, dry land training in. He has a much faster uh, first step than he's had in the past. So that's always good to have that speed on that top line. Trying to knock it out. Can't happen. Now it comes out of neutral zone. Wolverine's now going to go back the other way. There's Riles. Riles has it, pushes it up to Holla. Holla can't control it as right there defensively was Pettit. Riles leaves it out. Can't hang on to it. It was Holla and tried to come through the slot. And unfortunately, uh, Amendola wasn't able there to, to corral it through the slot either. And penalty coming. We're going to have a penalty coming on the rails. Kenan Riles is going to go to the bin. Not sure what they're going to call it. I don't know if he got a cross check or a trip on that one. Having some conversation with the official. He's not 100% sure on that one, but uh, he's also not fighting it. Officials out now trying to figure out uh, what they're going to give him. They're talking about it. I don't know. They might be giving him a five for something. Not sure. As they're going to skate over and talk to Coach Lasby. Not sure what's going on here. So we'll wait till we can get a uh, an idea of what's happening. Yep, they're putting a five on the board. So he got a five-minute 
misconduct. I'm not sure what he's getting it for. So we'll uh, we'll listen to uh, Mark Fleischman and hear what he's got to say as the uh, Wolverines will be on a five-minute power play as the Rails will try to kill it. Five-minute major penalty has been called on the Rails. Number 24, Kenan Riles. That for contact to the head, elbowing. That penalty coming at 7.48. That's Riles for contact to the head, elbowing. A five-minute major at 7.48. So there you have it, head contact for elbowing. He got a five-minute major. Uh, you know, they're going to be really on top of that, you know, going forward due to the concussions and such uh, within, uh, you know, the sport. So uh, the rails will skate five minutes short. And uh, Holla there trying to take it in and go get a shorty on that uh, first drive, not able to get there. And here come the rails again. Now clearing it is Moores. They'll just send it all the way down, try to take some time off. all good got that score widget back up there for you folks so about half of the what's left in the period where he rails will play on the penalty kill and not being able to set it up this is more as it's in his feet can't get, and able to go and clear it is Bartlam and Bartlam can't get it out of the zone either now down to the bottom right hand corner for the Wolverines comes to the top pushes it back down Looking for some help. Wolverines trying to set it up. Rails doing a nice job, staying spread out and making work for it. And that puck left right out in bad traffic area. It's going to come right back with a backhand. That backhand was Corona. And uh, right there to grab it was Johnson. And we'll have a face off in the defensive zone. So Holla, let's see who we got out there. Holla, Johnson, McLeod, and Oakstead on the uh, the second team out here. Going to try to clear it is Cooper Johnson. He gets it out finally. Holla takes a sidestep. It's going to get nice and deep into the Wolverine zone, and he's going to put some pressure on. Now steps back. 3:02 left on the penalty. Rails again doing a nice job on the penalty kill. They've had one other that they had to kill earlier tonight. And were able to play uh, neutral zone and deeper uh, most of the evening. And fighting for it down on the boards. And now trying to bring it up is Corondo. Holla going to clear it out. And not all the way down, but Oswald is there, but had to clear the zone. Barely gets it back in. Oakstead tries to, pardon me, McLeod tries to hang on to it. And another penalty coming as I think McLeod's going to get called for a trip. So the Rail's now going to skate two down for a full 220, two minutes for sure, but uh, there's 225 left on Ken and Riles' penalty at this time. So 4-3 uh, hockey game here. 6.37 left, two, two minutes and 25 seconds left in the Kenan Riles five-minute major for head contact elbowing, elbowing, and two minutes going to start here for McLeod with a trip. Not sure what we're trying to figure out now. Maybe something with the clock. Oh, they had the penalties on the opposite side. Oh, nope, they've got them. They had, uh, they had Ken and Riles penalty on the wrong side of the board, so they're trying to put it on the right side of the board. Before they announce that penalty. There'll be 2.24 left on the Riles penalty and two minutes to start for the McLeod penalty. And they are trying to figure it out right now. Dave Riles running the clock down there for us tonight. Thank you, Dave. And Kennens is back on the board, and here comes McLeod. And now we're ready to get back underway. 18 apiece, eight shots 
a piece here in the second period. We are back on the way. called on Proctor's number 13, Nolan McLeod. That penalty for tripping. McLeod tripping. That penalty coming at 10 to 23. So there's the penalty call on McLeod for tripping. That shot's going to go wide by Othal. Pardon me, that's Connor Davis. Davis has got uh, two goals on the evening already. Looking for that third on the hat trick. Davis moves from his left to the right, up into the high slot, can't get it to go, and going to clear it as the rails. So that gets out, and Sutherland uh, corrals it, now pushes back, and here come the Wolverines on a reset. You got Oakstead, Halla, and Cooper Johnson out there for the rails right now. And going to get it out of the zone is going to be Halla. Halla clears it out, and again, the Wolverines will have to reset. Pushes it down to the far right corner, Woods. Woods now going to circle back behind the net. Johnson looking for the puck. Try, they've tried to put it out in front, unable to do there, and he's on it as, uh, as it looked like Woods was right on top of that. Grabbed it, dropped it down, took another swat, and Johnson able to get on top of that and make sure that uh, that does not go into the net. Stay a little wider, just a little. So we're going to come down to the other side as I'm going to guess they're going to call that a hand pass. Somebody touched it before he did. Uh, and so we are in the offensive zone of the rails. 146 seconds left on the penalty to McLeod. Waiting for that to expire. And a minute six left right now on the penalty for Riles on that five-minute major. Wolverines takes a shot. Big glove save. That shot from Lund. Not able to fall. And again, we'll get another face off in the defensive zone. I'd like to uh, take this moment to send a shout out to the Proctor uh, Public Schools uh, teachers and staff. Uh, been a, uh, a long year in the aspect of just lots going on, COVID and trying to reteach things and stuff. Uh, uh, I believe uh, I would like to say that uh, you are all doing an amazing job. So uh, to all of you, our admin and everybody uh, at Proctor Public Schools, uh, great job and hope you're enjoying your break. Uh, it is well-deserved. Back here, this puck comes to the left side. That shot's by Otho. Otho puts it down to the right side. McLeod back on the ice now. Rails are one player short and trying to go over there and get that was Barlam. Barlam unable to clear, and now gonna fight on now below the net. Now Barlam gets it out, and it's gonna be right on net as Olsen has to come out and corral it, and coming down is McLeod. McLeod had wheels and almost got there before Deer Creek, pardon me, before the Wolverines, and the rails are now at full strength. So again, uh, 0 for 3 on the, penalty, on the power play are the Wolverines tonight and 3-0 and oh on the penalty kill for the rails. So, uh, you know, not that we want to start out in the bin, but nice way to start out uh, percentage-wise, uh, knowing that you've got the strength behind you uh, to fight that kind of stuff off. Amendola sends it in deep left side. Riles goes and gets it. Now looking for some, put it right out in front, but nobody there. Holla now going to fight back and go get it. Plays it off the boards, pushes it down late. This is Riles. Riles going to go with a backhand again. Now tries to corral it now with two on. Halla playing the body. Stick out of the way. Amendola pushes it back. Now the rails have it again. Comes up top side. This is Johnson. Johnson takes a shot. Can't get it to fall. Goes right side. Riles tries to push it around. Nobody there. A big swat out of it was Amendola. Amendola looking for his third. He was hoping to try to get that hat trick. And now Halla will hold on to it and kick it down to the boards. Trying to clear it is. The Wolverines, that shot's going to come in and bounce, and penalty coming for a hand. High stick is going to go down the other side. Oh, people probably don't want to hear me doing that. Little Cotton Eye Joe going on here. Mark Fleischman down there doing his thing. And here we go. Wolverines win the faceoff, kick it deep into the zone. 
but on it are the rails. Again, the rails have been uh, skating pretty well ever since the third goal. And now here come the rails, trying to dump it in the zone, can't get it there, was Barlam. Here comes Davis. Davis takes a shot, fires, sits on it, goes wide. Now all the way out of the zone as, as Sam Johnson was able to get there, uh, get a piece of it, enough of it to knock it out towards the boards, and it came out. Now Pavlovich defensively try, pushes it up, but holding the zone is going to be number 16, Pettit. McLeod there now. Shot going to go high and upstairs. That was Tomer. He couldn't get that one to go. And Johnson goes all the way upstairs and grabs it. And we're going to face off in the defensive zone. Rails won the face off. Now going to come and try to clear the zone. Here comes Oakstead. Oakstead pushes in the zone. I'm sorry, that is not. That is Amendola. Amendola takes a shot, but he can't get it to fall as Olsen steps out and gets it. Now here come the Wolverines staying on side. And that's going to get deep. No penalty going to be called there as they got tied up. And that's going to leave the zone. Pushing it back into the zone is Peterson for the Wolverines. And now that's going to go out. That will not be an ice um, as we as it got touched. Riles is there. And Riles' stick was stuck in the arm of Moyer. And Riles had to let it go and just go play the body. Austin Moores now pushes it up. Pushes it back from Holla. Now Holla pushes it back to Pavlich. Now back into the zone from Riles. That's Lauderville. Lauderville trying to take a shot. That's two shots. Can't get him fall. Another one goes. It hits the water bottle. Pops back out. And here comes the Wolverines. Othal. Going to be an icing call on the Wolverines. And that's going to come down the other side with a buck six left here in the second period. Caleb, what should we do? Should we play the interview again for those who didn't get to hear it? Or should we just let it be the sights and sounds of a clock? You're the director and the producer, so it's your decision. How about this? We'll play a bunch of our sponsors. We'll play a bunch of sponsors. Ah, we should do that. Got to make sure we thank our sponsors. So now Deer, Deer Creek, pardon me, Wadena Deer Creek will try to clear it out as we have the one-minute call. That's going to get down ice, and on it is Morse. Cole Berglund, one of the captains for the Wolverines, uh, would definitely get a vote from me for an all-hair team at this point. He has got some great veg uh, coming out of the backside of that helmet. And he's, got the, he's on the puck right now. You can see that veg just flowing as he goes. And right there trying to get that was Kern, but unable to, unable to control it, and it goes wide. And Rails can't clear the zone, and it'll get deep again for the Wolverines. Kern. Has it now, pushes it up the, up the sideboards. And this is going to be Solom. Solom clears the zone. And now the with six ticks left, Wadena will just kind of sit on it. And that's Kern as he's just going to sit there with Solom. And that's going to bring us to the end of two with the Rails leading 4-3 here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center. Again, want to make sure that we thank our student workers. Caleb Dobozinski and Devin Stafford for being here. And we are going to take a break and we will hear from some of our sponsors. We'll be back right after this. Hi, I really need to take care of a car problem. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Can you handle all makes and models? Will you get me back on the road quickly? High-tech equipment? Competitively priced? Brakes? Batteries? Tire rotation? Body repair? Guaranteed? Complete engine overhauls. <laughs> okay, they check out.
protect your investments this winter with an enclosed trailer from Wittis Trailer Sales, located in ESCO. We also sell cargo trailers, utility trailers, snowmobile trailers, and much more. Did you know we stock a full line of Heinecker snowplows? While you're here, shop the largest selection of Mahindra tractors in the area. Don't forget about our service center, ready to tackle jobs of any size. Wittis Trailer Sales in ESCO, where customers become friends. I'm Carrie Bailey and I am the audiologist with Audiology Concepts at the Duluth and Superior locations. A lot of gentlemen come in and they say, well, my wife is the reason why I'm here. She's been nagging me for weeks and months and years to come get my hearing tested and I'm just going to go get my hearing tested just to see where it's at. I want to help people communicate, get over the, the barriers that we're able to get over, help them live a much better, more fulfilling life. I chose the Heritage Window and Door because of their reputation and because of their renewal Anderson windows that they have. And their workmanship was fantastic. I'm so impressed. Your home is your largest investment. Don't waste your money on cheaper windows. These are the best. It's my money and I'm going to spend it where it's going to do me the best good and it happened to be Heritage Window and Door. They really know how to treat a customer. This has been an excellent experience. Potentials, lots of different options with the different loans that are out there. You know, what we'll do is we'll talk to you about your scenario, your situation. We'll figure out what actually works best for you. Um, but the key is what is going to be the most cost effective. So we will compare conventional versus FHA, you know, USDA versus, you know, FHA, different types of things that way. You know, sometimes even if you're a veteran, the VA loan might not actually make the most sense. You know, just because there are some fees associated with that loan that you might be able to do the same type of loan but do it cheaper with a different type of a program you know but again that's something that we will figure out you know we'll figure out the best scenario for you we'll give you the options but we'll obviously lead you in the right and most cost effective way to uh, purchase or refinance that house. You know I was a little apprehensive the first time getting hearing aids but that they just made me feel so welcome, like it was the only customer they had. You know, you don't know how bad it is until you get hearing aids. I mean, I, I can hear my grandchildren when we FaceTime now. I'm watching TV, I understand what people are saying. I don't have to ask for somebody to tell me what they've said. Uh, and that's what keeps me coming back. And I've got a new set of hearing aids and couldn't be happier. Stop living with the frustrations of untreated hearing loss. Call today.
Back here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center, Ted keep it along with our student workers, Caleb Dobozinski and also Devin Stafford. Thank you to them for uh, being here uh, and helping us out for our broadcast. Thank our sponsors again, Tamarack Building Supplies, Highway 53 in Hermantown, Heritage Window Door Superior, the Reed Foundation, the Rails Endowment for Academic Art and Athletic Development, the Irving Community Club Polling for Kids, Great Lakes Office Solutions, Wittis Trailer Sales in Esco, Linsmart Mortgage, the Rob and Barb Shaler Charitable Foundation, Stream Dudes. For all your streaming needs, check out StreamDudes.com. Troy Service Center in downtown Proctor. And of course, our game sponsor, Audiology Concepts, with five locations, Superior, Duluth, Grand Rapids, Edina, and Burnsville. Uh, thank you to all of them. Thank you to our students who run our broadcasts. And uh, for, because, again, without them, we wouldn't have uh, the broadcast to bring you. Uh, starting tomorrow, uh, if you want to, I know we haven't uh, pushed out the public size. Here they are, your Proctor. Proctor Rails. So um, as I started to say, I know we haven't publicized it. We uh, had some things go on this week that didn't allow us to do so. But uh, we will be uh, starting our, our venture with the NFHS network. Uh, starting tomorrow for tomorrow's home game here uh, with the rails uh, and uh, with Eastridge. Um, and that uh, will all be on what is called the NFHS network, nfhs.com. You can either buy us a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription. It is $10 a month or $69.99 a year. And that'll allow you not only to watch the uh, boys in hockey here, but anything that happens here or in our gym or and at uh, Eggerdahl Field for the rest of the year, uh, but it'll also allow you to see other schools that have the pick slot system. Uh, so if you wanted, like I know the Georgia State football playoff game uh, was today, uh, and uh, with the uh, NFHS, we could uh, watch that game down there. Uh, uh, you can watch from places all over the country that have this system. Again, that's NFHS.com. And you'll be able to watch all home games that uh, Rails TV is not doing. Uh, so tomorrow's game, will uh, JV and Varsity will be on there uh, going forward with uh, basketball. And uh, so boys and girls basketball, boys and girls hockey, um, all those events right now, uh, if we are not broadcasting them here on Rails TV, uh, they will be live on NFHS Network. Again, NFHS.com. Uh, go on there and subscribe. Uh, it, there is a fee to watch the games. Uh, but again, uh, they have, uh, it, it, I call it witchcraft. If there's a camera that pans and tilts and zooms and all this other stuff and zooming in, zooming out, there's audio. Uh, it shows you a live scoreboard. Uh, so you'll never wonder, you know, how many shots, how many buckets, what's the score is, that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, that'll be there uh, just as because, you know, now that we can do students again stuff, 85, we did 85 broadcasts in two months and two days last year. Here's Riles. Riles on the run. Going to get a little backhand, but get knocked off the puck. I lost my roster. Knocked off the puck by Moyer. Uh, so anyways, I'll leave it at that. NFHS.com. That's NFHS. Dot com for all the games that Rails TV is not broadcasting. Our next broadcast here will be Monday when the Hilltoppers come call in. Here's Riles by himself. Moyer backhand and goes right, but Moyer was right there trying to get a piece to disturb the action of Riles, and he did as he goes right. Holla now between two players. Here's Riles. Riles believes it out front, unable to get it is Holla, and going to get it was Oakstead, but he left it at O. Oh. Here comes Davis, and Davis scores. And Davis is going to get a goal unassisted. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So that puck picked up in the defensive zone by Davis. Connor Davis is going to skate all the way down, unassisted, and put one in the net. That's going to be a hat trick for Davis uh, on the evening. Let's take a listen in with Mark Fleischman on the goal and assist, if any. It should be unassisted, but you never know. So 4-4 four, four here now. And Wolverines win the faceoff. Now dump it deep again. Johnson Scoring the unassisted off. goal for Wadena Deer Creek, his third goal of the hockey game at number six, Connor Davis. 
That goal comes at 105 of period three. Davis, third goal of the hockey game at 105 of period three. Make sure you stick with us till the end of the game. We'll check in with a couple of our sponsors, and then we're going to come back with our Audiology Concepts, three stars of the game. Make sure you stick with us for that. Now the Rails will try to come back and put another on the board as uh, we are now at a 0-0 hockey game with 4-4. That's going to get out of the zone. Pushing it out of the zone was Lauderville. Lauderville is not going to try to help hang on to it, taking a wide shot. Solom over there trying to corral it now off the back, off the boards, and the Wolverines will get it deep. Here's Kern. Kern trying to push it up back up is Lund. Kern tried to put it in the slot, and it's going to hold the zone as running up to make sure is Pettit. And that's going to hold the zone again. Now, now comes out. That's Solom. And turning back inside is Lund. Lund trying to make something happen. Holding the zone is Allred. Solom gets it out of the zone. And now the, oh, picking it up right on the line is Allred. A little, little congestion there by the rails bench or just inside the blue line. And now out of the zone. It's pushed by Bartlam. Solom trying to get it out of the feet of Kern. Undo non nothing doing there. And now the Rails will try to get it out of the defensive zone again. Shot high and wide off of Johnson. I want to say that was number 24 for them. That's Woods. Again, stay with us for the end of the game, folks. We'll have our ideology concepts, three stars of the game. Holla there to take the face off for the Rams. He's got Amendola and Riles with him. That's going to go wide. Davis was looking for his fourth of the night. Now going to get it out of the zone. Corralled there by Sutherland. And... The Wolverines will turn and try to come back again. But Hollis says no and pickpocks him now again goes back in with Moyer. Woods and Sutherland give chase. And now Holla tries to push it up. This is Riles. Riles backhands it into the slot, but there's no one there. And now Amadola will go and try to get it. And here come the Wolverines. He gets pickpocketed. That's Woods. Here comes Sutherland. He's got Woods trailing in the slot, and he drops his feet. Penalty coming. I'm not sure about that one, but it's easier to uh, officiate uh, on the ice than it is from about 13 rows up. So Cooper Johnson going to go to the bin for the rails. Uh, gets called for a trip. Again, not 100% sure that was a trip as he was trying to come through and knock the puck off the stick. But the Rails will go on the penalty kill for the fourth time tonight. And Holla tries to take that and tries to shove it out. Pardon me, that's Solom. That penalty was for slashing. Johnson slashing. That penalty coming at 4.05. So the penalty to Johnson is for slashing, not tripping. And at 4.05 here in the third period. And now the Wolverines will try to set something up to try to take a lead. They had a, a two nothing lead early going, and then the Rails put four unanswered on the or three unanswered on the board, and then finally the uh, they put their fourth one up. Woods pushes it into the zone for the Wolverines. Moves from his left to right. Now trying to come back towards the slot, looking for some help. Going to leave it off. Leaves it right on the doorstep. Johnson puts a glove on it. We get a whistle, and we'll have a faceoff. So 109 left in the penalty kill for the Rails. Again, Cooper Johnson sitting in the bin for a two minutes for a slash and trying to clear the zone was Vincent Holgren. 
If Dom is watching, how you doing, Dom? Hope you're doing well. Hope uh, your first year out is doing, treating you good. That one's going to go high and up and over. Left side trying to bank it in was Lund. He couldn't get it to go, and then it goes up and over again, and now the Wolverines will reset again. Pettit puts it through the slot, was trying to hope that he'd get Lund to get a piece of it. Doesn't happen, and it goes into the right-hand corner. Pettit. Can't hang on to it and tries to push it back down the boards, but Riles right there will clear the zone and put it in the offensive end. 18 seconds left in the penalty kill for the Rails. And right there, this is Holla. Holla pushes right left side. Well, for a shorty, and he gets it, and he gets the goal. Get it. That's going to be Riles. Let's take a look at that. So they fight on the boards there. Riles pushes it back up. Riles left side. Holla pushes it to Riles. Riles comes in and goes left side, goes stick side on Olsen. And the rails are back in front, 5-4. Your rails are back at full strength. That was a shorthanded goal for the rails. Puck is down. Now here come the Wolverines. Scoring the shorthanded goal for your rails. His second goal of the hockey game, number 24, Kenan Riles. He got an assist on the goal for number nine, Dylan Halla. That's Riles from Halla, shorthanded at 6.03. So 6.03 shorthanded Halla to Riles to take a 5 4 lead here with 10 minutes left here in the third period. Again, want to welcome everybody in that's joining us tonight from the Proctor Faithful as that goes out of, out of play and a fan gets a souvenir. Thank you to the Rails Faithful for being here, and also thank you to everyone from Wadena Deer Creek that had a chance to uh, tune in. Uh, I'm supposed to pass along a message to those of you from Wadena Deer Creek. Uh, Cece, Chris Carter says hi. He'd love to be on air with us right now, uh, but uh, he's doing his, uh, his mingling thing here at the Sports and Event Center. So Chris Carter says hi. Cece is in the building and is glad that aunts and uncles and others are able to watch this uh, back from home. So. Thank you for joining us. Oaks did trying to clear the zone down on the uh, end boards. Unable to do that. And now the Wolverines are looking to make something happen. Sutherland pushes it back deep. Connor Davis with the puck. Uh, well, knocked off it. And here come the rails. Here comes Amendola across the line. He had help from, and that's going to go wide as Olsen came way out of his net to play that puck. Johnson pushes it back across and they're going to get back into the offensive zone for the rails. Again, it seems like the rails get a one on the board and they tend to start skating just a little bit faster. Here comes Riles. Riles going to have some help. He tried to drag it, but unable, unable to. That's going to be off sides. And now we have a two on four, which should not be an advantage, but it is. And that's going to be from Woods to Sutherland. Woods to Sutherland on that goal. Let's take a look at that pickpocket there as it's thought he had it at the line and it's going to get in and, and uh, Sutherland is just there to bury it on the left hand side from Woods. So we're tied up again here all at fives. So just waiting to hear what time that was at. Make sure that it was Woods from Sutherland. And Scoring the goal for Wadena Deer Creek was number 26, Aaron Sutherland. He got an assist on the goal from number 24, Cole Woods. 
That's Sutherland from Woods. That even Swinkle coming at 8.03 of period three. So Sutherland from Woods, I had it backwards. I think I said it right the first time, but then I said it backwards the other way. But uh, uh, it's a name we've been saying a lot tonight. Uh, uh, let's see. They also had a goal. That line also had a goal the other way around. Uh, Woods from Sutherland instead of Sutherland from Woods at 4.52 of the second period uh, here tonight. So again, all tied up at five. And trying to... Hold the line was Pavlovich, and he was unable to get the shot through, almost fell down, and right into the belly of Johnson, and able to hold on to it, and Lockley able to kick that away and trying to clear it as Morse. Ethan Carter trying to push it up all the way to the other side, and Pavlovich will try to get it out of the zone. Unable to do that as he hit it into a player, and now it'll get out, and that's probably going to be an ice, and yes, it is. So it'll come all the way back down. And they'll try it again. Luckily, uh, Johnson was able to get that one out in front of him because uh, he was it was just out of his reach. And he, le le he leapt forward, was able to get it and uh, make sure that that didn't go to the net because it was some loose trash that was uh, going to be put in uh, if not. So trying with a little toe drag was McLeod, but he was just not far enough over the uh, red line. And that's going to be nice, and we'll come back down and do it again. Nice to see a bunch of alum in the house. A lot of seniors uh, from last year that are here and uh, other years prior. Jackson Seguin and many others here. His uh, brother plays on the uh, JV, I believe. His uh, mom, Kim, down there taking pictures. Uh, if you're looking at the Proctor Hockey Facebook page, uh, she is the one that uh, takes all those great pictures, the pictures for the program and so on. So... Uh, thank you to Kim Seguin for everything she does. That one's pushed off the skates of McLeod. Now he's going to run down into the end board and try to go get it. Solom tries to push it back up top. Can't hang on to it. And here we go. Three on one. Oaks has got to figure it out. Going to be called on an offsides. Lucky break for the rails. Not sure, but hey, we'll take it. Face off one, push backwards, and now the rails at Pavel is going to clear it out. This is Riles. Riles looking for help, gives it off to Holla. Holla comes across the line, takes a sidestep, turns and fires right into the stick of Olsen. Holla back down there fighting, and that's going to come up and to the edge and going to chase it down is going to be Holmgren. Holmgren is able to get there and try to push it back up and over. And here comes Holla. Holla's going to put pressure on as Sutherland tries to go back below, below the goal line and try to hold him off. And he can't as some high hands got there. Nothing called. And here come the Wolverines. Holmgren got sidestepped. And luckily the puck came off and there was nothing doing there. Here comes Riles. Riles now going to reset. Dumps it deep as we'll get a defensive change for the Rams. It's pushed to the wide side uh, for the board side for the Wolverines. And on it, and coming in hard was number 17, Anthony Lauderville. Lauderville's had some good ice time tonight. Kept into the zone uh, by Cooper Johnson. Lauderville. Oakstead dumps it deep. Right there in the shot is by Bartlam. That goes high and wide to the right. And the rails will hold the zone as Johnson knocks it back down deep. Sutherland clears the zone. That's going to go high and up. And that's going to bounce at the end line for a icing. And it'll come back down into the offensive zone for the rails. So as you can see, folks, 549 left here. Third period, 5-5. Shots are 25-26.
uh, with the uh, Wolverines leading in that category by one. That shot taken there by Johnson was inter was uh, deflected off of a defensive player for the Wolverines and comes all the way down into their offensive zone. And here comes McLeod. McLeod may try to make a move. McLeod, pretty fast skater, and coming down in to get a piece. Was Barlam to try to get into the offensive zone, and he does. Now Barlam is pursuing the puck, far right side. Trying to clear it out the other way is Evan Lund. And they'll keep, the rails will push it back out of the zone, and the Wolverines will have to reset. Pettit gets it deep for the Wolverines, trying to clear it. This is Amendola. Amendola fights and does get it out. And the official got in the way, so couldn't get it deep. And that shot's on net. And Johnson will freeze it up. As Moyer came in and was going to have an opportunity if he did not freeze it. Rails win the faceoff, comes wide side. Kenan Riles on it. No icing here as it's going to be have to be frozen by John, or by Olsen uh, because Riles right there running right with him was Moyer. But Riles would have had an opportunity if Olsen did not come out and play that puck. But again, offensive faceoff for the Rails. Amendola, Halla, and Riles out there along with Morse and Pavlovich. You'll hear that name for a couple more years. Uh, used to be Connor Pavlovich. Uh, he is at uh, CSS now. Graduated last year. Halla puts it up to Morse. Back to Halla. Halla tries to put it in the slot. Knocked away by Domer. Domer again got in the way of that puck. And Lund now was going to try to clear it, but it got pushed back deep. Now here comes Lund. Lund pushes it up, Kern. And here comes Riles. We got a 2-2-3-2, two, 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 or 2-3, two, sorry. And taking out his own goalie is going to be Nicholas Wright. No, I take that back. That was MJ Lund that took out his goalie. Come back around. That is now going to, is going to get out. As Lonerville was doing his part, was going to try to skate it up ice, but made body contact with Davis and was able, unable to continue up ice and knocked off the puck. Now the rails will clear. Barlam pushes it up to Solom. Solom on his wheels. No ice. Push it in the slot. Waiting for right there was McLeod. And nothing going to do as the big-bodied so, or pardon me, uh, Brett Bartlett tried to come through, but Olsen was on the puck, so nothing doing there. We'll get another face off. 3-11 left here, third period. Timeout taken by the rails. We're going to take a timeout, too. We'll be back after a word from a few of our sponsors. Hi, I'm Dr. J with Audiology Concepts at the Grand Rapids, Minnesota location. I have so many patients who tell me I wish I would have come in sooner because I thought it was just a simple miscommunication here or there or that the TV just needed to get turned up. Most people with hearing loss in the United States don't have a really severe hearing loss. It's more of a mild to moderate hearing loss and it happens so gradually over time you might not even notice it happening. So when you come in, not only have a really great opportunity to give you an update on the status of your hearing, but also to have a conversation about how to protect your hearing. Car problem? Can I ask you a couple of questions? Can you handle all makes and models? Will you get me back on the road quickly? High tech equipment? Competitively priced? Brakes? Batteries? Tire rotation? Body repair? Guaranteed? Complete engine overhauls. <laughs> okay, they check out. Protect your investments this winter with an enclosed trailer from Wittis Trailer Sales, located in ESCO. 
We also sell cargo trailers, utility trailers, snowmobile trailers, and much more. Did you know we stock a full line of Heinecker snowplows? While you're here, shop the largest selection of Mahindra tractors in the area. Don't forget about our service center, ready to tackle jobs of any size. Wittis Trailer Sales in Esco, where customers become friends. Back here at the St. Luke Sports and Events Center, just getting back underway after the rails call a timeout who, to try to figure out what they're going to do with 3.05 here in a tie game, 5-5. Again, fans stick with us after the game. We'll have our ideology concept, five, three stars of the game. And again, want to make sure we welcome in the rail faithful and also everyone from Wadena Deer Creek that has offering an opportunity to watch this game that wasn't able to travel. Riles pushes in the slot. Waiting for it was Amendola. Amendola just couldn't get it as it was a little too far out of his reach. And here comes Woods. I'm pardon me, Sutherland. Sutherland takes it, drops it off, leaves it for Davis. Davis takes a slap shot and misses as the uh, Johnson steps up and blocks it. And we'll have an offensive, or pardon me, a defensive faceoff. And shot taken right off the faceoff by Domer. And that went right side and rolling and trying to get another shot was Corona. And here come the rails. Trying to sidestepping was Solom. Unable to do that now. Trying to corral it. It was Morris. Morris pushes it deep. And now back on our other end. 2-1, two, 2-2. Two, two. And now see what happens here as he drags around the far side. Can't get it. That was Corona, and he is unable to get that as nobody was in the top half of the slot, and it got right through. That's going to be an ice. That's going to go all the way down, and that will come back the other way. Rails win the face off. That's Oakstead. Pushes it back deep. Looking for help. Holla pushes it across the slot for Riles, but Riles unable to get there. And here come the Wolverines. Amendola pushes it back. Riles. Kern trying to go there to play the body. Again, if you're just tuning in, it is Muck 28 left 5 5 ball game, or pardon me, 5 5 hockey game. Um, and if we had an all hair MVP award, it would go to Kern, number 12 for the Wadena Deer Creek Wolverines. That's Berglund, not Kern, with the amazing flow. As Berglund's shot can't go. Whistle blows, net came off the uh, stanch, so now they put it back and 59.76 seconds left here in the third period of regu in the regulation in general. Solom McLeod. Let's see, we got Solom McLeod, Bartlam. Moores and Pavlovich on the ice for the rails. Just couldn't see the other skater. And Solom will chase around him deep side. Trying to knock it back in as McLeod. McLeod is able to hold the zone. And now here come the Wolverines. Connor Davis. Davis with a hat trick already tonight. Push it across the slot. Big save there by Sam Johnson. As out there to get it was Woods. Woods had a nice rebound shot. And Johnson able to come out and get it. And keep this a tie, a tie game. I keep wanting to say ball game for some reason. Maybe I'm thinking of baseball. Folks, just so you know, I'm not talking to myself. I'm actually talking to one of our students that's working the broadcast. Hey, they're going to take a timeout. Uh, Wadena Deer Creek taking a timeout. We'll take a timeout, too, here from a couple more of our sponsors, and we'll be back. Hi, I'm Dr. J with Audiology Concepts at the Grand Rapids, Minnesota location. 
I have so many patients who tell me I wish I would have come in sooner because I thought it was just a simple miscommunication here or there or that the TV just needed to get turned up. Most people with hearing loss in the United States don't have a really severe hearing loss. It's more of a mild to moderate hearing loss and it happens so gradually over time you might not even notice it happening. So when you come in, not only have a really great opportunity to give you an update on the status of your hearing, but also to have a conversation about how to protect your hearing. Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we see great things in the future as we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, gain knowledge, and make a difference. What do we see in the next generation? We see greatness. Proctor Public Schools, don't just plan to graduate, graduate with a plan. I choose the Heritage Window and Door because of their reputation and because of their renewal Anderson windows that they have. And their workmanship was fantastic. I'm so impressed. Your home is your largest investment. To Back on our way at the St. Luke Sports Event Center. Ted Keefit on the call here for you and the rails trying to clear it out. 24 seconds left here. 5-5 five, five, hockey game. Oakstead pushes it up. Here comes Riles. Riles going to try to play it. Unable to do it. It's going to be off sides as Riles has to reset. Now back into the zone come the rails. Morse pushes it back deep again. Couldn't get it deep as the Wolverines were right there to stop. And that's going to do it. And we're going to go to OT. Going to go to free hockey, everybody. You paid to be here. You now you get some free hockey. Bonus hockey on the night. Again, we end at regulation 5-5. For Proctor goaltender Sam Johnson, eight for three period total of 26. Now of a two minute rest period followed by an eight minute sudden death overtime. So there you heard it. We're gonna have an eight minute sudden death after our rest period here. Uh, five five is our score. And because of uh, uh, everything going on, uh, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll just kind of let you Check out the scoreboard, let you run to the restroom, grab a soda or a snack, uh, and we'll be back. Welcome back to the St. Luke Sports and Event Center. Bonus hockey here between the Rails and the Wolverines. 5-5 after regulation. Headed into OT here. Eight-minute skate. Uh, sudden death. And the Rails try to keep it down in the zone. That's Riles. Riles now with it. Takes a shot. Pushes it right side. And going to get it is Pavlich. He keeps it in. Now here come the Wolverines. That was Connor Davis who... Uh, was trying to push it in, now it is good, and Sutherland will try to push it deep into the zone. Now here come the rails, oh, but Hollis couldn't keep it on a stick. Riles has help from Hollis, take a sidestep, and Hollis pushes it into the zone, trying to take it down. 
Now leaves it for Riles. That's Morris. Morris keeps it in the zone defensively. And you got a, uh, I hate to call it this, but a cherry picker up on the other side. And now he's going to set back into the zone is Davis. And no goal going to be caught as Olsen able to get on it. As Riles was there to try to push it in. Riles now talking to the official. Hopefully uh, nothing, uh, no, nothing big there. So the Rams will not change. It, oh, yes, they will. Now comes out the next line of Bartlam, McLeod, and Solom. Defensively, we'll stay with Moores and Pavlovich. Solom wins the faceoff on it is... Sorry, I just was watching the play. It was Bartlam. And Bartlam ready to hang on to it. Now pulls it back in. Now knocked back out of the zone. Now pushed way deep by Pavlovich. Cooper Johnson now back onto the ice for the rails defensively. Moves to the left side. Here come the Wolverines. But on it. Trying to fight through it was Bartlam. Goes to the side of the net. He hangs on, tries to push it into the slot. Nobody there. Now here was. Uh, that was McLeod, but he goes wide right side as he had a wide open doorstep as Olsen had moved to his left. Well, his right, my left. Oakstead high and outside on that shot. And McLeod will keep it deep. Getting a change, and here comes Halla as Bartlam now off the ice. Now going to go far right side. Not able to corral it was Solom and Oakstead. Knocked off the stick of, of Amendola, and that's going to be icing, and it's going to go all the way down to the rail's end, and we'll get a face off in the defensive zone. Again, stick with us, fans, as we'll have our three stars of the game when we're done here. So Halla takes the draw, and Wadena Deer Creek wins. Now trying to fight it, comes up and around, pushes out of the zone, and that's Amendola. Amendola hangs on and pushes. Now Halla trying to get it deep and unable to. That was Pavlovich. Riles trying to get up and underneath the stick of Moyer, but nothing doing. And try for the big shot was Moyer, but couldn't get it to fall. Now this is Davis, but in the way of Davis was, that's Riles that came out of that. Here comes Riles. He has help. He has Amendola on the far side. Looking for help. Tries to push it back out of the slap. No, holds on to it. Now goes inside for Halla. Halla can't hang on to it. And here comes the, no, Amendola is able to push it deep. Riles chasing. Amendola. Cooper Johnson able to help there to keep it deep. Now push it back up top. That was going to go to Amendola, but nothing doing. And now here come the Wolverines. This is Davis. Davis moves all the way to his left bottom right corner. Now going to try to hand pass it, or uh, backhand it up. Unable to all the way back around. And here come the rails. McLeod, one on two. He has help on the right side if he if he can get there and put into the end boards and back there to pick it up is going to be Barlam. Barlam tries to push it wide, able to keep it in his Oakstead. Oakstead sends it rink wide. Here's Oakstead, sets, fires, and going to be sets, fires again. Tried nothing, a little softer there to try to put it out to Barlam. And now we're going to have a 2-2 as Davis and Sutherland coming to the zone. Just too much by Davis, but all the way around and able to hold the zone for the uh, for the Wolverines was Peterson. Johnson trying to clear the zone, unable to. Now here comes Oakstead. Oakstead pushes it down, and that's going to be an icing. So 3:46 left into this, or pardon me, left in the uh, overtime, and here we are, still all tied up. Shots are 31-27 for the. Wolverines. And Halla will be there to take the face off for the rails. And Berglund for the Wolverines. And the rails win. 
Here comes Riles. Riles has Amendola up on his right-hand side, but lost the puck as he came into the zone. Hits him in the feet, able to keep it and push it deep. This is Halla. Halla off the backhand on the board, trying to keep it in. Morse. Morse shot gets through into the end line. Now back there to get it is Halla. Halla's going to chase. That's Berglund. Berglund trying to help. And all red. With Lundy comes through. All red. Trying to push it up, but right there to take it is Riles. Riles a little more patient now into the zone. And Berglund, but whiffing on it was Halla. Halla there defensively just putting some pressure on Berglund. Pardon me, on right. And 2.44 left. Clock ticking down in a 5-5 hockey game. It's going to be a hand pass. I'm going to go all the way down. Offensive. It's going to be an offensive uh, faceoff for the Rams. Again, thank you to... Caleb Dobozinski and to uh, Devin Stafford for being here, our students that are working our broadcast. Oakstead gets it deep. The rails now will head in. Now Oakstead gets it all the way down to the end board. Giving chase is Lauderville. Lauderville pushes out front. That goal goes in. That's a goal for the rails. And in overtime, the rails will get the win. So the Rails get a win here to start off the season. 1-0 here at Holmes at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center. Uh, I'm not sure. There's a big scrum down there. I'm not sure if Caleb even saw uh, what happened down there. But uh, hopefully we'll turn it over to the in-house PA and we'll find out uh, who had that. Uh, as uh, that was a big goal there for the Rails here in overtime. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure who had that. I saw that replay, but still not, just not 100% sure. Uh, I'm thinking uh, that it might have been Pavlovich. Uh, or, no, I was, I'm going to bet, actually, it was probably Bartlam because uh, uh, he was the tall body down there out in front. Uh, and I'm thinking he might have had it, but we'll find out here in half a second. Scoring the goal for your Proctor Rails, his first of the season, number 21, Brett Bartlum. He got an assist on the goal from number eight, Brady Domeyer. That's Bartlum from Domeyer. That overtime goal coming at 546. Actually, that was uh, Bartlum from Solom. The C that was Bartlam from Solom on that to take the goal 6-5, the Rails lead. We're going to take a quick break here from one of our sponsors. Uh, when we come back, we'll have our three stars. Um, we'll have our three stars of the game. So we'll be back in just a minute. You know, I was a little apprehensive the first time getting hearing aids, but they just made me feel so welcome, like it was the only customer they had. You know, you don't know how bad it is till you get hearing aids. I mean, I, I can hear my grandchildren when we FaceTime now. I'm watching TV, I understand what people are saying. I don't have to ask for somebody to tell me what they said. Uh, and that's what keeps me coming back. And I've got a new set of hearing aids and couldn't be happier. Stop living with the frustrations of untreated hearing loss. Call today. Welcome back to the St. Luke Sports and Event Center. Big time hockey here tonight. Uh, the rails are victorious over the Wadena Deer Creek uh, Wolverine 6-5, uh, take that first win. That win had to come in overtime as it was a battle back and forth uh, that ended the third period in 5 nothing. or pardon me, at fives, five apiece. Uh, and then with 2.14 left in the overtime, the Rails put one in. Uh, Brett Bartlam puts one in uh, to get that done with an assist 
from Solom. So, uh, again, want to make sure that we thank our students, Caleb Dobozinski and Devin Stafford, for being here and uh, being part of our broadcast tonight. Want to make sure that we thank our sponsors, Tamarack Building Supplies, Highway 53 in Hermantown, Heritage Window and Door uh, in Superior, Wisconsin, the Reed Foundation, the Rails Endowment for Academic Art and Athletic Development, Irving Community Club Polling for Kids, uh, Great Lakes Office Solutions, Wittis Trailer Sales, ESCO, Lensmart Mortgage, the Robin Barb Schaller Charitable Foundation, Stream Dudes, for all your streaming new, new needs, streamdudes.com. Uh, Troy Service Center, Main Street, Proctor, and also Audiology Concepts. Speaking of, of Audiology Concepts, there are three, they are the uh, uh, sponsor of our three stars of the game, so let's get right into that. Uh, at our third star, and actually before I get to the third star, um, I just want to give a, uh, a, an honorable mention to the line of Davis and Pettit uh, for the Wolverines. Uh, I mean, they came out, had the first two goals. Uh, down the way again, Davis had another one unassisted for an hat trick. Uh, you know, Woods and, and Sutherland also uh, great back to backs. Uh, done a great, you know, Woods had the goal and then and with the assist from so Sutherland. And then in the third, Sutherland had one with an assist from Woods. So, uh, you know, just uh, great skaters. Uh, and they those uh, pairs did a, a really, really good job. So, just honorable mention to them. Uh, they were actually our third star until uh, we hit, had a new one. Um, uh, we're going to give our third star for the ideology concept. Third star of the game is going to go to Brett Bartlam, uh, that overtime goal, being out in front, getting that trash and knocking it back home and uh, getting that big win for the rails, uh, you know, to start things out. So uh, congratulations to uh, uh, Brett Bartlam. Uh, second star is going to go to Amendola. Uh, you know, Amendola came in um, uh, as part of that top line as a junior. Uh, you know, Frank Amendola, he's going to make some noise this year. He, he's a tough little player. Uh, he's, he's, he, he has a nose for the puck, uh, and he's just always there doing his thing. Uh, and he comes in at the number two star. Uh, and he was tied right there with our number one star, Audiology Concepts number one star, uh, Kenan Riles. Kenan Riles, uh, he gets that for that shorty that, he, that uh, they got. Uh, he had so much hustle. I talked about it earlier in the game uh, in regards to just his feet. Uh, you know, he, he's skating like a different player. He's skating uh, much faster than he has in the past. Uh, he's not never been a, really a slow player, uh, but he is skating so much faster, uh, and you can just tell that he's put some work in, uh, and, uh, you know, he did a great job. He was able to run up there, corral that shorty, uh, and put it in on the left-hand side of Olsen there. So uh, congratulations to him as the number one star, uh, the Audiology Concepts number one star of the evening. Again, fans, uh, tomorrow's games, JV and Varsity, will be live on the NFHS network. It's NFHS.com. Uh, go there, create an account, uh, put in your school uh, name, uh, which is Proctor. Uh, or if uh, you're watching from Eastridge, you can go look for Eastridge, however you want to do it. Uh, but those games will start uh, prospectively about 10 minutes before uh, they're scheduled. It, there is a fee to watch. It is $10 a month or uh, $69.99 a year. Uh, but again, that allows you to watch any schools across the country, any sport uh, that has the Pixlot system. And then Rails TV will be right back here Friday, or pardon me, on Monday night uh, when the Hilltoppers will come into the St. Luke Sports and Event Center uh, as a face-off here uh, at 7.05. We'll have the boys from the Northland Sports page doing our simulcast. Our kids will be running the broadcast uh, cameras, and the guys uh, Dave Cook and Brian Prudholm uh, will be your voices for the evening, and we want to thank them for being willing uh, to come in and be part of our program. So on behalf of them on, uh, and our students and our sponsors, I want to thank you for uh, spending the evening with us. Again, thank you to the Rails Faithful and to those from Wadena Deer Creek for joining us this evening. Uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, gain knowledge, and make a difference. Proctor Public Schools, we see greatness in our students and great things for their future. We educate, engage, and inspire 